The Joy of Trucking. Kevin and Tanya, thank you guys so much for thank being you. here. Uh, YouTube influencers, your channel is growing. You guys are blowing up. <laughs> and, you know, what do you think of Matt's so far? Matt, Tanya? Well, Matt's so yeah. far, yeah. yeah. What, do you, what, do you, what do you guys think about the show? We got here yesterday and, uh, and met you guys. Uh -huh. uh, Real, real warm welcome from OTR. Thank well, you very yeah, much. No, yeah. And uh, looked up a couple of people we'd seen last year. And we've only, we, we've covered the North Wing and uh, just dabbled in other areas. So we, yeah. we still need a lot of time. But we must have walked 20 miles yesterday, just, just up and down, up and down, and checking out everything. There's some awesome trucks here. That's what I'm saying. You know, like yeah. these trucks, you would think that, you know, just a semi truck, this clunky piece of metal. These are works of art. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and I've always said that, you know, who's the guy that's cleaning these things? Right. Well, I, I saw one of them yesterday out there. Did you? He was with his little cloth, like every little <laughs> every bolt head. part of it. I mean, honestly, yeah. 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 I mean, that, it, it has to, I don't know, that, that job, I guess they don't get paid enough for that job. Yeah. <laughs> it's a love and a passion. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you can't. You definitely can't do that for money. No, no. Yeah. It is. It is a, a, a dying breed. The, the cleaners. <laughs> well, let's talk about you guys. So, you guys are. You, you got quite a story. You were in. You lived in Saint Croix for 20 years. I mean, and now you're in Kentucky, which yeah, and, I think is and, you know. And Saint Croix, Virgin Islands, not Saint Croix, Wisconsin. We just want to clarify. Just that. want to clarify <laughs> that, folks. <laughs> yeah. What was it like living on the islands, and why? Why did you come back to the States? <laughs> well, first of all, I, I'd always wanted to live on a, on a tropical island. It's uh. every Canadian's dream. <laughs> like, get away from the snow. And North shovel, America shovel isn't, a, isn't enough, big enough island for you? No. no uh, but uh, I'd visited like the Bahamas and Jamaica, and I thought it wouldn't be cool to live in a place like this. So I, I had the opportunity. A friend of mine moved down there, and he moved his business, and I went down there and worked for him for a while. And when that finished, I... I thought, I still want to stay here, so I had to find something local to do. Yeah, so like something a... local, like Marry Me. Oh, uh, is that where you guys met? You guys met in... We met yeah. there. Oh, we met really? There. You know, we had kind of parallel lives before. Like, she lived in Toronto, and uh -huh. I, I, lived in, I lived in northern Ontario. Yeah. And we, we traveled in similar circles uh, in, a lot of, in a lot of ways, but we actually met there and uh, got together and got married there. So wow. that was 20 years ago we got married. Yeah. Introdu yeah. We were introduced by mutual friends. And oh, we had, oh like, no you were interest. set up. We, had, we were, you were, we set, were like, yeah. no, you were he's not my type. She's right. not my and type. Right, and you're there like, well, that's too bad. You are now together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is yeah. the way it is in St. Croix. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but we made, we made a really good life for ourselves down there. It was, it was a lot of fun. And when it stopped being fun, we decided it was time to go and try something else. And that something else was buying an RV yep. and selling jewelry across the country yes yeah. all right so that is something that i would love to do <laughs> i was my wife and i always talk about our retirement plan is to make some tchotchkes buy an rv <laughs> and just drive around to shows you know, yeah. so tell me how was that was it all it's cracked up to be and remember yes. my, my wife is listening so yes. make sure you, you say yes, yeah. yes wife. Yeah. it was awesome <laughs> yeah i will i will say uh after after being on a on an island it's only 25 miles long. You could drive around the whole thing in an hour. Oh, right, right. We were, we were jonesing for a road trip. So <laughs> yeah. we hit the road for three years. We put 45,000 miles on the motorhome in that time. Yeah. Wow. We, 40 we moved, states. We moved every, every week or every other week. Oh, wow. We, we lit out. <laughs> and uh, so we got that out of, our, out of our system for the most part. The, uh, we were working uh, festivals. So it yeah. might be a car show or it might be a <laughs> spring festival or a fall festival or something. But the cool thing was we we're, were set up in our little tent. We yeah. had our products laid out. And we met so many oh. fantastic people all yeah. over this country. People would come up and start talking to you and you'd learn their stories. And, wow. and they, were just, they were just being friendly and nice. And you think, you know, what... What's all this stuff you hear on the news about, yeah. uh, you know, this group's against that group and yeah. everybody's hostile? People aren't really like that. Yeah. People you know, are not like that. People are cool. People are friendly everywhere. Yeah. Well, we all know that bad news travels faster than yeah. good news, right? And everybody it's wants to complain about everything. Nobody's yeah. like, hey, I went there and actually had a good time. Yeah. That's a boring story, you know? <laughs> I went there and I met this yeah. person and they were a real jerk. Yeah, Doesn't that's a better so story. <laughs> yeah. Does it sell stuff exactly? Yeah. But yeah, we had, a, we had a fabulous uh, time in that life. You know, 40 states in three years. Any state just, that stands out that oh, you... Can, no, 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 no. We get that question a lot. Yeah, you have so to. We, you guys... we, we, nope. 
No, nope, no, nope. you're, you're not biased. <laughs> With, in the back of your mind the whole time is, you know, we came from we came from the islands, yeah. and we had beautiful scenery and warm water and perfect beaches, so we were kind of also looking for the next place to settle down. Oh, right, so we spent right. all this time, these three years, roaming around and, and waiting for that one special place to just grab us and say, let's... Let's put down roots. Yeah. That never, it never <laughs> happened. There wasn't a place that stood out so much that we didn't want to leave. We still wanted, wow. to, we still wanted to see what was around the next corner, and that's, that's what just kept it going, you know? And that's what got you into trucking? Well, basically, we got shut down by COVID. Right. In 2020, uh, we were in Phoenix. We were, we were actually driving to our next yeah. event uh-huh. when they called us and said, oh, President Trump says everything is stopping uh, right now. Yeah, today. the world But stopped. we were at the gas station putting we were, fuel in the we RV. Wow. From, from a weekend show, so we headed back out in the desert. and, and Waited it out in the desert? No, uh, <laughs> we sat around the campfire a couple of nights yeah. and had a discussion and talked to other people that were out there. Right. And I said, well... I should get a job, and we'll make a little money, and this will all blow over in a month. <laughs> that, COVID, that COVID stuff, that ain't going to last. Yeah. Yeah. People oh, are going to get tired of this, and they're I all going to go back to normal. I know. Like a you know. month or two. It's so, you know. so easy. A year, a year later, I right? said, this working thing sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to get back on the road, man. I That's wanna awesome. I want to go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like, Phoenix was great. Uh-huh. The climate was good. Yeah. Uh, that summer we had 100 days over 100 degrees, so it was kind of hard in the motor. Home. How do you even yeah, deal with that? <laughs> How do you even deal with that? Yeah. Oh, those walls are probably caving in. You well, know. I kept small. hanging. I, I kept hanging uh, <laughs> quilts and stuff, and my living area kept getting smaller because the AC at the end could just manage like, uh, right where the table oh was. Oh my gosh! You know, everything yeah. Everything else was like the Titanic in uh, sections. You I know? can't imagine. And yeah. that, we spent that year just trying to figure out where it was going to go and what yeah. to do next. Tanya was getting into, she was looking at Etsy or starting a, a web page because we right. still had our products we wanted to sell. Okay. And then she was looking at, at writing and journalism and maybe... Online we'll, courses. Online courses. And, I mean, I was busy, busy all day long. <laughs> he was at Amazon in the air conditioning and I was in my... Oh, my gosh. You know, 8 by 8 online, just <laughs> oh, doing wow. a lot of Whatever stuff online. Whatever you could do, yeah. yeah. But and that's what, uh, if, if I may say, that's also what then got me comfortable with the idea to have a YouTube channel. Like, uh, I had thought about it for the RVing, yeah. you know, but I just yeah. kept thinking about it. I didn't know how to do it. So yeah. then I had the chance, really, to sit and, and get comfortable with online things and, you know, uh, that's... And, and build some skills so that then I, I started yeah. uh, with a couple... RV videos, and then in November, Kevin was like, God, I'm really, really, <laughs> this was not what I had in mind. It was, it was like, I mean, you think about it. We spent three years just roaming. We had freedom. Freedom. We had, we had, you could pull over to the side of the road and look at a museum. Yeah. Or, you know, go, go look at some cool cars and running into people all over. Right. Go, and in, in, because of COVID, there were separation issues. Like oh, you yeah. couldn't get within six feet of other people right. in this warehouse with thousands of people. So you sit, you sit and have lunch, and you can't even reach uh, the person next to you. It was such a I, weird time. I knew two or three people in that in that whole time that I worked with, and wow. everyone else was a stranger. And to me, it was like a prison sentence. You go in, you punch the time yeah. clock, and you you do. And ten hours later, you're out, and oh, yeah. you come back the next day. And yeah. So we needed a change. Yeah. I wanted to bust out of there so bad. Yeah. You know. And so he had when when COVID first happened, he had said, oh, maybe I should like. Because he loved driving the RV. We had yeah. a 30 I love wheel class time. A. I love a good road trip. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so he had kind of mentioned, hey, you know, maybe I should drive a truck. And I was like, well, you know, this might only last a couple of months. So, like, why don't we wait and go back to RV and whatever? Uh-huh. And then by November, he's like, I'm hating it. I was like, <laughs> well, did you still want to be a truck driver? Yeah. So we're actually like that typical COVID pivot story because yeah. we, we had yeah, to pivot. We, we had we had 2020 lined up. We had paid in advance for all the events. For oh the year. wow! Yeah. Because now it's the third year. We figured out what works. <laughs> right, you were ready to do money. it. Yeah, we had the inventory shows we had lined up, and they all shut down. And most of them kept wow. our application fee. Oh, of course. Fees, so we didn't even get that back. Oh. By the end of the year, we 
we got the hint that it wasn't going to be like it used to be. You we, have we to pivot. Go back to you have to do something different. To, done, you know? Wow. And he so, loved driving. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was it was perfect. an easy decision. Yeah. You're like, let's just do it. Let's Back go to trucking. Every day is a road trip now, <laughs> man. Yeah. I like planning it. I like figuring out the stops. And, yeah. And, you know, where we're going, what we're going to see on the way, and hit the gas. So I think we even, you, didn't you have videos of you getting your CDL? I mean, yes. you guys, the, you, your channel starts from... Well, that so Day that's one. what so Day that's one. what happened. Like I said, I was I had wanted to do something with RVing. Yeah. You know? So I was learning how to do it. I recorded a few things, but I hadn't actually hit the live button. Yep. And uh, and then he then he went to CDL school, and I was like, you know what? Because when when we were looking into it, YouTube videos really helped us do the research. Always, and yeah. So I was yes. like, you know what? Why don't I record you every day you come home from school? We'll talk about what you learned that day. So people looking into doing their CDL, they'll have an idea what to expect. And so I started. We missed the first week, so we did a summary video for the first week but did after kevin that, have a say on day, this or was he just like okay she's like i'm gonna record know. you for the rest of your no, life we're, we're, we're a team <laughs> and he's like uh we, okay we yeah <laughs> no, i'm pretty easy kidding. going i do what i'm told most of the time. <laughs> that's why i'm a good driver oh <laughs> uh, no i from the videos you guys have a great uh dynamic between the two of you it's definitely she's definitely the the yang to your ying for sure man <laughs> For I sure. Got I got to respect. Ah, you know. He's a <laughs> I got to respect her creativity. Yes. Her, she has an art background and and it shows. And it, so she she has a vision of and and an attention to detail that this is exactly how. Yeah. This does not look good. There's something sticking out of your head. <laughs> or, you know. Don't 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 blink all the time. But it's because she has she has an overall conscious thought about what it should be and what it should look like and which way it's going. So every day I'd come home from CDL school and she'd say, well, ju I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Yeah. Tell me what you did. Yeah. Well, I, I steered this way and the truck did this. And, oh, I don't know. Yeah. and then some guy yelled at me. Right, or right. Or it was so a bad every day thing. she did that and then it turned into... It was like a journal coming together. Yeah. You know? Well, if, if anybody wants to know how to grow a YouTube channel, uh, you know, all you have to do is put out a video every day for a year and a half, right? And that's how you start it. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean, that, that we, we, we're laughing, but you really did that, yeah. Tanya, a yeah. year and a half. Yeah. And Kevin was like, it's like eight hours. I mean, I do video myself, so I know what it takes to edit yeah. the video. Um, what, yeah. The motivation, how do you keep going where you're like, you know, he's working his butt off. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to just, you know. Yeah. Or, or were you like, you know, I hope Kevin's that interesting. I hope this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's that interesting, so I'm thinking other people might. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's the thing. She's a YouTuber, and I just happen to be the subject. I have no, I have no that's interest that's in this YouTube stuff at all. Okay. Well, you guys, you do a great job. I mean, your, your channel is so informative, you know, and the tips and tricks that you guys give to new drivers, I think. Is, is, is helpful. You know, yeah. like you were saying, YouTube is a place where people go to learn how to do things. Yeah. And I think that you hit the nail on the head about A, being maybe just a married couple out in the road, but I think it's like you're welcoming everybody on the adventure with yeah. you, you yeah. know? And you're honest. Yeah. You're honest. Like, yeah. you know, you guys didn't have to to, to, uh, to put the video of, of Kevin getting pulled over, you know? <laughs> I mean, that, that was awesome. But, I mean, that's just your honesty. Like, some people wouldn't even put that. No, no, I don't want to. I don't want yeah. to put. I screwed up on on, on, yeah, on we, my channel. We we definitely want to be authentic. Yes. And the motivation is to, uh, we want to entertain, educate, and empower people. And so yeah. it started with um, just taking people along on the journey and everything that he was learning, we would share. So that meant showing all his mistakes. Right. Right. <laughs> that we're hoping. That's how you learn. We're yeah. Oh yeah. To cut uh, the learning curve for other people because what we found is people get their CDL, mm -hmm. so they know how to drive a truck. Except yeah. they don't even teach them how to back up, which as a trucker you got to do, you know, every day. Right. And then they don't really teach you how to be a trucker out on the road. They just teach you how to drive the truck and pass the test. And so for us, it was important to show all the things he was learning. So that other people could could have that, you know, without making the mistake, yeah. hopefully could already apply the learning from from his journey. Well, know? I was talking to the Boston trucker yesterday, and he was talking about the training and how, you know, they they, they need to train common sense, you know, for, first and foremost. But there's a lot of things that they don't tell you, you right, know, and, exactly. and it's mostly just like, where's your money? Stamp of approval. Here's your CDL. Yeah. You know, and it's like, just like you were saying, like backing up, you know, like. It seems like something that should be, you know. I yeah. mean, we all had to learn how to parallel park. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. so take a 53-foot trailer oh, and put man. it in a parking spot between two other trucks. Yeah. You know, that's right, while somebody else is waiting and oh, yeah. honking and, and, and yeah. Pressure's on. And, and dude, maybe you have to go to the bathroom because you've been driving for three hours. Oh, my gosh. To park the oh. <laughs> it's a whole life. It's a yeah. lifestyle. So there's, you have to manage your time. You have to think about where you're going to eat, where you're going to sleep every night because you're in a different place every night. How to, how to look after the truck and manage the truck. How to communicate with your, your manager to get your loads, to organize the loads and tell them when you're not, you're not going to get there on time or maybe you're going to be early. Yeah. It's, it is learning a whole new life. And yeah, they don't teach you that in CDL school. Right. No, you know, absolutely. Well, I think what they else they don't teach you is like what, how to eat healthy, you know, or how yeah, to, hey. I, or you know, like what, what do you guys do for that? I mean, yeah. I think I would just be, you know, McDonald's, Burger King, you know. Well, you know I mean, it, it, are you guys? Is it like you know, once a week you eat out, and then like, are you cooking in the truck? Do you so, have so eating healthy, being healthy is very important to us. So yeah. that's been a thing we've been doing for years and years, and so then getting into trucking. You know, we put a lot of thought into how how to do that. So we do right. have things on board to cook with, but at the end of the day, usually you're, you're, you are too tired to cook, <laughs> you know. But we eat a healthy breakfast, and yeah. then actually, and, and our viewers see what we do because we, we put that in the video. And yeah. actually had, we had one guy one time, he's like, you guys have really inspired me. I've put down the chips and picked up the, <laughs> the fresh vegetables. All we right. eating carrots and radishes and cut cucumber, like, you, you know, nuts. Well, at, at, yeah. at first, she'd try to cook a meal at oh. night. By the time you finish a 12-hour day. Oh, my gosh. And then she gets out all this stuff in yeah. the pan. And then you got to wash the dishes and all oh, that. Oh, right. And what, what I do now is uh, I get up in the morning. I'll make, I'll make something for breakfast. It uh -huh. might be some hard-boiled eggs I already had done on yep. my day off. Or it'll be a bowl of oatmeal or something like that. That, but then I'll start chopping vegetables. So there'll be celery or radishes or carrots or kale or cucumbers. Yeah. A little, little dish of salt and some bananas and apples and that sort of thing. And it's, it's right next to me while I'm driving. So all day there long. There you I go, just, man. Snacking <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. Dock, you know, or a handful of mixed nuts. That's a great idea. Yeah. And by the end of the day, I'm not hungry. Right. I mean, if I am, I'll grab, I'll grab like some chips and salsa. It's going to be something really light because uh -huh. I, I just want to hit the rack. I got a little yep. bit of paperwork to do or maybe I got to go for a walk because I got to get out of the truck. Oh, for sure. I don't want to spend two hours making a meal and washing dishes and everything when I got to be on the road again in yeah. 10 hours. That so makes complete sense. It's constant. It's got like noshing as you go along. kind of keeps you satisfied. And at the end of the day, you're not looking for a big meal. All right. Now, That's a, a great tip. If I have a day off. Yeah. If I'm in a town or close to a good restaurant or something like that, you you want to get out of the truck and see the country yep. and you know meet some people or see what's in that area. You know? Yeah. Every, so, yeah every, so we, you're kind of a tourist everywhere you go, yeah. right? That's so, so on fun. reset, we go on adventure and we we usually look for like a local restaurant. Yeah. I was gonna know, say, like what what, what is the go-to so food? We don't, we don't Anything? Do, we don't do fast food except you do Subway every once in a while. I'll do, I'll do yeah, yeah, I like Subway. Yeah. It's healthy. It's yeah. Not fried or anything like that. Right. I, I I gave up red meat and coffee in like 1980. It's been yeah. decades. No coffee. No coffee. I, wow. I the oh I man, I I I love coffee. Tea. I love to chew my coffee. I just, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's just like yeah, it's so does, good. He does the tea, I do the coffee. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then um, the other thing and our viewers know that and I and I do want to do a big shout out to all our viewers and our subscribers, Absolutely. you know, happy if you're joining us or seeing this on replay um, cuz we love we love our viewers and we've really created a community so I, I love that. But they know once a week Put it in the comments. What does Kevin like to eat at least once a week? Liver. Really? <laughs> yeah. How do you prepare it? Is it liver and onions? Is it? I, if we're if we're in a restaurant someplace, yeah. like a like a local diner or something, if if, yeah. if I got a day, I'll I'll start googling restaurants and checking their menus to see if anybody's serving liver and onions. Looking for liver. But we have a we have a fridge with a freezer on the truck, so yeah. I'll, I'll keep some liver in there, and we have a an electric frying pan like a yep. skillet yep uh i used to cook it in the truck like right on the floor between the <laughs> seats but on my i got That's a brand new kenworth oh, last man. year oh I man the liver outside yeah next to the truck wow okay. what's that in, smell in it's the, the remnants of the liver snow. and onions I mean, in the truck the stop snow parking stop. lots <laughs> with garbage <laughs> yeah. oh i, I know this truck stops in my yeah truck. oh <laughs> yeah but i gotta have it i, I need yep. the iron and, and if i don't get it i start to feel kind of tired okay you know, so I yeah. know when it's when it's lacking. I'm, I got that metabolism that kind of burns up iron. Yeah. I got a buddy, 
he actually is the opposite. His, he seems to store iron to the point where Interesting. it makes it yeah, Shout out to, to Tom. Get, he has to get <laughs> bled hey, every now and then because there's okay. too much iron in wow. the system. Wow. Yeah. best friend from childhood, so they, oh, have, like, really? they, they balance each other out with the <laughs> yeah, iron. I could use some of what he's got. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, that's, you know, my diet is a lot of fresh, raw vegetables and fruit and liver once a week. With, and with, uh, with potato? You do the oh, sweet potato. I get a sweet potato. Yep. And peel it, and cut okay. it up, and we have a we have a kettle. So I boil water for yeah. my tea or oatmeal. But yep. I can I throw the sweet potato in there with water and boil it in the kettle. And, sweet, and we kettle. also make the the hard boiled eggs in the kettle. In so the you, kettle. You, you, you so know. this kettle is is the go to utensil a very every day. In the jar. Okay, every right. Day. Yeah. But you know, drug. sweet potatoes don't take as long to boil as as normal white potatoes. Yeah, I didn't know. And that. they actually have more nutrients yeah. than the white potatoes. So did you know? You <laughs> <laughs> and then a little a little coconut oil on a little cinnamon, a little pepper, and you got you sea got salt a pretty, or pretty nice little, salt. Wow, pretty nice little I'm getting hungry. And it's, and it's funny because somebody just yesterday in the comments was like, Tanya, share the recipes that keeps Kevin so fit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, like yeah, you show he, your parents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, he family does his own yeah. thing for the most part. You know? And I will say I'm a. I'm kind of a sugar addict. Like I like I like desserts, like a pie oh, or you know. ice cream or something like that every now and then. But in the day-to-day -day stuff I eat, like I, I'll read labels in the grocery store to look for the yeah. sugar content or how much yeah. food coloring or well, preservatives. Well, Ra Raul over there has this app that you scan everything and it tells you how horrible everything is. <laughs> so you know you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like you know, yeah, you, you you grab a Snickers bar. It's like, oh, how good is this? Like. This stuff will kill you. It's like, oh, <laughs> what? Like cancer yeah. Cancer. yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy yeah. it. And you're like, no, no, come on. This so is so good. Took the fun out of it. Right yeah, right. yeah, you're ruining everything. And that's, I mean, and I will say though, like, it is hard. It really takes a lot of effort and time. And that's one of the things we try to inspire people, show them yeah. ways of doing it, because because it is hard. Like, you you know, in the we hear we have a lot of retired truckers that follow us, and they're like, "Oh, you know the mom and pop restaurants right. and stuff." And the armchair travelers that is that is well, that? They're, yeah, they're they're vicariously Love living, it. living the life on the road through us. But yeah. there used to be a lot of mom and pop restaurants and stuff, and now really, truly, when you pull over for the night, you know, at the truck stops, and we're grateful for the truck stops. Yeah. Don't get us wrong, but. There's really, it's very difficult to get healthy food. They now have like salads a little bit or some boiled eggs and yeah. stuff. But it really, it does take effort. So we, we're trying to show people how to, how to be able to do that in a, in a way like these raw vegetables all day long, you know. And you do I have the, the fridge so we, we can carry those with us for a while. And he yeah. shops once a week. Usually he gets to a, a Walmart because you can park the truck. Okay, yeah. You know, or he does it on his reset and walks to the Walmart or had a scooter. He was going with the scooter <laughs> to the Walmart. The best thing is if, if the Walmart's like a mile and a half away because yeah. you got an excuse to get some cardio in. Right? right, yeah. And you come back hauling 20 pounds worth of supplies. And that's the weight, you know, the <laughs> weight. <laughs> the weight training. Yeah. <laughs> weight training. Oh my gosh, that's it's awesome. Exercise. Yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing, like exercise, you know, when I'm on the truck with him, because I'm not on the truck all the time, but when I'm with him, it's a little harder, but when I'm not there, usually end of the day, you do usually still manage to fit in a bit of a workout. He's got weights with him. Yeah. Yep. You know, so we've I shown got, a I few of the those, things. Uh, ankle weights? Yeah. Put five pounds on each foot and go for a walk. That's, right? That's one of <laughs> the feel things. Great. He does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. It's not, and you, like you pull in at a rest stop uh -huh. or a truck stop, and there's nothing else around. There's nowhere to go. But if you go around that parking lot twice, that's that's almost a half a mile. There's Those truck stops are, are big. huge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do that with leg, leg uh, ankle weights on there. <laughs> You've had your workout for the day. That's it. Yeah. So so when you're on the road and the cameras are off, what are you listening to? What are you doing? Is it books on tape? Is it is it Tanya telling you a story when she's there? <laughs> is well, if, you know? If are we're you... together. Yeah, we talk or. Usually we fight. And, uh, <laughs> well, hey, you know, a marriage isn't a marriage without yeah, a little, yeah, uh, we, you know. We, uh, we call it the RV our pressure cooker, oh. you know, and then we downsize to a semi. It is, it is a small a space, pressure, you know. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta small figure world. out how to, how to live with each other, which uh -huh. for the most part we have. But it yeah. is, and he's at work, you know. That's the other thing. I mean, he's right. at work. I'm yep. along as the paparazzi, <laughs> you know, <laughs> following him around with the camera. Yeah. But there are, I mean, there are stressful situations, you know. Well, when the, when she's not filming, she's working on the video. Yeah. Okay. She does 99% yeah. of it on her iPhone. So wow. it's, 
There's the editing. You put music to it. You make a thumbnail. You wow. cut scenes and, uh, in and, and out. You zoom in and out. You know, I try to, I, yeah, I try to really. She reads re all those comments. I read all the comments. I respond at the beginning. I responded to all. Right. You know, now I just, yeah. I just can't respond to all of them. But I, mean, I read all of them. I mean, it's a good problem to have, you know. But yeah, that's you know, but that's <laughs> yeah. That, that's but we're cool. building relationships. Yes. You know, and we're also trying to encourage our viewers to build relationships with each other. So we know, like a lot of old timers, will put comments for newbies who have questions. Um, so there's a lot of interaction in the comments, and yeah. I really try to try to support that and and you know respond to people, and so that that does. T I'm I'm often he's he goes to bed at you know nine o'clock. He's sleeping. Yeah. I'm in the bottom bunk, you know, like until so two midnight. in the morning, oh, yeah. answering comments, I mean, working on making the videos. I believe it. I, I mean, it takes a lot. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of back end work that goes into running the YouTube channel, creating the content consistently yeah. you know and I don't, I don't see how some of these guys have a youtube channel and they're dry, like they're doing it all themselves right. i could not it's, i could not do it yeah, it's, it's not amazing. it's a grind it's you enough know it's a for grind me for to that. work 70 hours a week driving <laughs> the truck what else do right? i do right yeah well speaking of driving the truck when you're um when, when you're out and driving you know there could be issues you know a uh, fault code could pop up you know check engine light that type of thing have you ever been stuck on the side of the road or have you ever had to get a tow yes <laughs> yes yes uh, it's trucking of course <laughs> what, what kind of question is that <laughs> yeah right we got in we got out of oklahoma on i-40 almost to amarillo and we had a, a light come on uh-huh and uh it said like within an hour we're gonna shut you down we're so gonna blow up in there exactly an hour. It, was, it was probably it was, a knock sensor or something like that yeah you were gonna over. go into a d-rate i believe so oh, yeah okay yeah. i know i this was two years ago. Right. Uh, all I remember is we, we pulled into a truck stop, made the call, got road service. Yep. And they said, we're going to have to take you to a dealer back in Oklahoma. Like, in other words, 80 miles back the way we had come. So wow. So we had to get a tow truck, hook us up, and we rode in the tow truck with the guy. That was a rock and <laughs> oh, ride. Peter <laughs> Bill, <laughs> old Peter really? Bill. Really? Oh Towing God. another it truck so and going fun. 70 miles an hour, and this guy's just, this just, guy's just Oh, it was fun. Open <laughs> pipes right next to the cab. <laughs> it was screaming. I was like, wow, this is how the real truckers do it. Yeah. Like, Holy smokes. Yeah. This thing was just, it was, it was rolling. That's amazing. But, uh, uh, one, uh, I was by myself one time. I come through Charleston, West Virginia, mm -hmm. headed down, and you get into the mountains. And I just climbed a hill after the, the first toll booth, and there was this poof, and a, like yeah. steam. And I looked down, and it's like the temperature gauge just went whack. Whoa. So I, I got to the shoulder. Luckily, there was a paved shoulder right at the top of the hill uh -huh. and shut it off and let it roll to a stop and uh, raise the hood. And the uh, the coolant was empty, and I saw a hose that had come off of the engine block. Yeah. So made the call, oh, sat wow. there for an hour, and a, a young guy comes with his girlfriend in a road truck, and uh, <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, "Oh, yeah, I've seen this before." He says, "Look at this." So where the hose enters the engine block was a plastic fitting. Yeah. The nut. So with you know climbing that hill, it got real hot. There was a lot of pressure, and it just snapped it off. Interesting. He says, look at the one next to it. I said, I said that one's brass. He says, yeah. So <laughs> that's what should be here. But for some reason, the manufacturer used plastic for a couple of years. Yeah. And, and he's seen it before. He knew, he he ran knew exactly and got the what part. it was. Yeah. He ran and got the part. He comes back with all this coolant. And he had yeah. the hose. And boom, boom, boom. Wow. It was, it was three hours on the side of the road. But I learned something. And it was a nice day. It was a beautiful <laughs> spot. There was trees and Great birds. video opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And we had a... Had the knock sensor a few times uh -huh. in uh, Alabama. We had to oh, yeah. go in, in and have that change. We spent spent a night yeah. there. Uh, by yeah, they put us Alabama. up in a hotel. It was very lovely, yeah. little vacation. I mean, so yeah, but you you guys, so Kevin, you drive for a company, and there's and there's a lot of uh, owner operators out there that get stuck, and they don't have that company. Um, you right. know, they don't the have support. The, the company support. Yeah. You know, and they're on their own in their truck. I mean, imagine. Your truck is your business, you know. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's how you get, it's how you work, it's how you make your money. But if you were solely responsible for everything with that truck, that's a lot of pressure, you know. And um, not to do a big pitch, but we, you know, we make a tool called OTR Diagnostics that just gives you, empowers you to do your own repairs. It gives you plug it in. It's a diagnostics tool. You plug it in your truck, and you can view live data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see the health of your truck. And that just kind of empowers that owner operator yeah. to kind of not have to rely on the dealer, or maybe at least if something goes wrong with the truck, they're armed with the information so that they can call and say, "Hey, 
I have this fault code. I'm coming in, you know, yeah. and they can at least prep for it. Well, but, and it could it could be the difference between oh, it's this. I can still drive my truck to the to the repair versus calling a tow truck. That too. Because if you don't know what it is, like you're like oh, well, if I drive it, is it going to blow up and I'm going to have like more repairs versus oh, exactly. I could still limp it to the, you know, to the truck so, to right. the repair shops. Knowledge so that, knowledge is yeah. really important. If you have yes. if you have an idea, if the diagnostic tells you exactly what's wrong, you can make better informed decisions. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's just arming you with that information. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. And so, I, I wanted to add in still because we're talking about different things. Now, now your product would not help in this case, but we had a blowout, and I want I, I'd love for Kevin to tell the blowout yeah. story on the steer tire. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was serious. I mean, I've had I've had bad tires on trailers and even a flat yeah. on the drives once, but right. Uh, Thanks for joining us for the first half of this interview with OTR Performance. If you want to hear the blowout story and lots more, be sure to check out part two. In the meantime, give this video a thumbs up. Put your comments and questions below. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you want to travel with us and learn about trucking. And we'll see you in the next video, part two of this very interesting interview at MAPS 2024. With love from Kevin and Tanya. Bye.